Hello again, I'm John Hoyt, and I'm here to continue this series to provide some fundamentals for security, some practical, tactical advice that you can implement today that can help reduce risk in your home, with your family, with your friends, at work, wherever. And today I want to talk about, um, the title of this is Factors of the Second Kind. And the main purpose of this is just to, you know, talk about last time we, we talked about passwords and how important it is to have unique passwords that are strong, long, and that you can use something like a password safe that can help you maintain those and have less worry about using that same password on multiple places. Well, just like I mentioned last time, and how important that is, you still have to worry about your passwords being stolen or being in a breach for a site that gets taken because there, there's a possibility there where when that happens, they still could take advantage of it for at least that site or that place that you they stole the password or they got the password in a dump. So what do you do? And two-factor is a big solution for this. Um, what is two-factor, multi-factor? It's just something that you have. It's not just your password. It's something that you have that validates who you are, right? So it could be a, you know, your phone. You have your phone. You get a text message on your phone, and it gives you that code. Everybody's probably seen that. It could be a token, a USB token that you have to plug into your computer that validates you are who you say you are. Um, it could be a phone call where you get a call from the the company that or the, the, the software that's giving you that second factor to validate as you. When you answer the call, you get a code that only you know that you can then use to log in. Now, are they, you know, the silver bullet to reduce and stop all, um, you know, malicious activity with authentication? No login no but they can dramatically reduce that risk and I mean a good story is that in my experience we had people that would be fished and many people have seen this attack but they would be fished they would steal their credentials and this is before we had multi-factor they would use those credentials and log in and you know, say they they fished, maybe they sent an email, a phishing email of a thousand emails. Well, out of that, in a typical phishing attack, around 20% fall for it, no matter what. I mean, it may be lower sometimes, maybe it depends on how good it is, but just in general, it could be about around 20% that fall for that. So that's a, that's a you know, if you have a hundred people, that's a lot of logins that you can potentially use and, and abuse as a bad guy. So what do you do? Well, or what, did, what did they do? They would use that. They would steal those credentials. They would then log in and they would have done their homework. They had researched our HR site. They had researched, um, you know, where to go, how to log in to the, the um, basically to get to the payroll information. Um, they figured out how to do it. They had a plan. They were logging in from all over the country. Um, well, sorry, all, all over the world, typically outside the United States. And the only way we could identify at that time where they were coming from is because they would all come from the same IP. They'd all come from the same geographic location. It might be London. And you'd see like all these users that had logins from London. And we just had this phishing attack and this correlates, right? This is bad. So they would log in to the HR site. They would change, they would go to the, the direct deposit information and they changed that to a routing number that they had access to. And so when direct deposit would roll around, they would, um, you know, it would potentially send that paycheck to their, their bank account versus your bank account. And, you know, this is a big deal and a lot of places were seeing this attack and it was effective. You know, even if they got one or two or three or four, I mean, that could be thousands and thousands of dollars and you multiply that, they have no risk because they're outside the U S multiply that by however many targets they had. And, you know, it was 
effective. It was they were making money. So what what you know before we had two factor, what would we do? Well, we track them all the users down by those locations and by the geographic locations, and we reset all their passwords and hope that we got everybody. Um, and then we inevitably maybe we get everybody, maybe we didn't. And then you know we were like, okay, well we're gonna block those kind of logins to our HR portal to um, from London or from whatever that location was from. Nigeria was the, yeah the Nigerians, so we do that. Well, you know they just they attempt to log. They do that same attack. They attempt to log in and they figured out. Oh wait a minute, I can't log in from that same location. They would just proxy to a different location, um, and then we started blocking it from outside the U.S. And yeah, they're smart. So they would all right. Well, that's fine. The next time they did the attack, they would then come from proxies inside the U.S. And then we would do blocks for those IPs so they couldn't log in again, even because they were still doing like central IPs, central locations. Um, but then they would start coming from close to a proxy close to our location that made it much more difficult to determine what was bad, what was good, right? Two-factor, multi-factor, just put everything, all that attack, into the mud. I mean, it just slowed it down completely, if not stopped it mostly. I mean, I think they still do the attack, but it's just for when they do that and they find out that you have multi multi factor, it's like, well, we can go to somebody else. This is this is too much work. We could probably get past it. There's still attacks you can do, but it's just too much work. And and people talk to us and they they're like, oh, you're the multi you're the people that made us do multi-factor yes but do you know why do you know how that's helping save your paycheck do you know how that's helping save your credentials um, a lot of people don't see that story and, and whenever whatever I, I tell people I was like look just multi-factor everything everything you can especially everything um, important just use multi-factor on there most things have at least the option to do you know phone type multi-factor that's not the best because there are still attacks where somebody could potentially spoof your number and, or get them to change your number to their phone it, it, you know it has to be serious you have to be pretty serious about it to make that work but it's a possibility app based two-factor is better if you can do that and like google's authenticator it's free use that it's free check it out um but there's lots of options you can utilize but basically bottom line is just do two factor as much as you can wherever you can because your password is going to get stolen just assume that a password is going to get stolen and when that happens you would rather that you have a safeguard because when you get that text message that says or that authentication attempt that says somebody's trying to log in with your account do you want to do the two factor for it and you're like no you would never have known otherwise if you didn't have that multi-factor. You would never have known, potentially. So it's important, it's easy, something you can implement today. It's a good tactic to implement. So thanks for watching. Share this with whoever, if you want to. You don't have to, but if you want to, if you think it's useful. And I appreciate it. Have a good day.